Ratchet and Clank. You know it, you love it, it's why you clicked on this video, or at least why you couldn't be bothered to change it when it started to autoplay. With over two dozen adventures in the last two decades to choose from, it can be difficult for some people to agree on which was the quote unquote best game in the series. I mean, even just a quick scroll through Reddit will show you a bunch of groups of people making some really compelling points as to why their chosen game is the best. My club is better. Say it. Come on, say it's better. Say it. Say it's better. Say my club is better. Say it. Give it up. Whose club is better? Mine. Say it. You know it. And it's normally the repeat offenders you get. Games like Going Commando, Up Your Arsenal, A Crack in Time, even the recent Rift Apart has a huge case to make here. As it turns out though, everyone is wrong and I'm here to set the record straight. The best Ratchet and Clank game is the one that's technically not even a Ratchet and Clank game. And it rules. I present to you Ratchet Gladiator. Or Deadlocked if you live in a country where you spell mum with an O instead of a U. First of all, some context, because holy shit does this game desperately need it. While the original trilogy was going from strength to strength, games releasing at the time like Halo and GTA 3 were literally reshaping what players wanted from modern day titles. These two games alone put everyone, and I mean everyone, on notice. This led to successful franchises like Jack and Daxter and even Ratchet and Clank wanting to get in on that action. Ratchet and Clank first started to see a bit of a shake up when Up Your Arsenal launched within weeks of Halo 2 and had a much greater focus on its combat. But where Up Your Arsenal just dipped a toe into the water, Gladiator bloody cannonballed into it and boy did it make some waves in the community. Gladiator embraced the mature themes of games like Halo and created a story where Ratchet and Clank are kidnapped, held hostage and forced to compete in a life or death sport called Dread Zone that was televised to millions of children around the galaxy. Okay, that, <laughs> that seems really dark. No, no, it's not dark, you're misunderstanding me, bro. Even the game's title gave us that implication that this was gonna be a big departure from what we already knew. For the only time in the entire franchise, Clank is omitted from the very title. And honestly, that implication alone is bigger than you might first realize. Now, you, you've said that word implication a couple of times. What, what implication? Ratchet and Clank is, at its very core, an action platformer and its two main characters represent each of those pillars. Ratchet has always been in charge of the action, being the character that uses all the weapons and controls all the vehicles. Clank, on the other hand, has been our vessel for any platforming or puzzle solving, with his helipack and hover abilities being used to navigate their worlds. But as the name implies, Clank is reduced to dialogue and infrequent cutscenes, which gives us two significant changes to this game. First, and most importantly, no more Clank sections. Thank huge win there. The second thing though is that it changes the genre of this game entirely. What was an action platformer is now just a third person shooter. Fortunately for Ratchet and Clank, the combat's always been a strong point of the series and that's no different here. There are 10 weapons to play around with that are all based on guns from previous games and while that number of weapons is much smaller than we're used to, each gun can be upgraded twice as much, being able to be leveled all the way up to V10 during the first playthrough. In addition to this, mods were introduced allowing you to customize things like increasing the rate of fire or ammo capacity. So even though there are only 10 weapons, each can now be customized to better fit your own personal playstyle. While the inclusion of vehicle missions do give you a break from all the running and gunning from time to time, don't be mistaken. Pretty much the only thing you'll be doing in this game is combat challenges. This drastic change in gameplay meant that the very structure of a Ratchet and Clank game also had to change. Unlike previous games, Ratchet can no longer just hop from planet to planet willy-nilly because in Gladiator, he's being forced to compete thanks to a deadlock collar. Meaning if he tried to escape, it would, well, you know. What, we some kind of suicide squad? Gladiator is broken into challenges or scenarios. Again, think similar to the arenas from the previous two games. These might have you trying to defeat a boss or a certain amount of enemies, or just make it to a certain point on the map. Once you've completed the objective, you'll get an arcade style end screen, giving you a review of how you perform for anyone wanting to ride that leaderboard dragon. What this does mean though, is that almost all of your missions start by just selecting it from a main menu, which definitely adds to the feeling of playing an arcade game instead of something a bit more fluid. Now, I know what you're thinking. It sounds like this is going to get very, very boring, very, very quickly. But the pacing of these challenges is so fast, nothing has a chance to oversay its welcome. Let's put it this way. Have you ever done that thing where you won't watch a movie because they go for way too long and I don't have that kind of time, only to then go and watch an entire season of Friends instead? 
Not me. No, no, no. Me neither. Well, each challenge can take anywhere from two to five minutes to complete. And while this game is the first in the series to have different difficulty options, most are pretty straightforward to beat. These short challenges give Gladiator a real, I'll just do one more quality, which can keep you coming back again and again. These short, bite-sized challenges also remove the risk of poor checkpointing and means there's really no punishment for failure outside of replaying just the last two or three minutes. And that gives you more of a license to experiment with different guns, different mods, or even upgrades for your two new robot companions. Now, even though Gladiator is all about the combat and it is missing a lot of fan favorite characters like Captain Quark or literally anyone else that's not does have some of the funniest writing and most interesting characters in the series. The big bad here is Gleeman Vox, the head of a vast media empire who's fueled by fame, money, and merchandising deals above all else, something I'm sure we can all relate to. And I can't do a video on Gladiator without giving a special shout out to Dallas and Juanita, two commentators that set the scene for most of Ratchet's challenges throughout the Dread Zone. These two are honestly just the bee's knees, and I would never get tired of listening to their quips or put downs before jumping into the challenges. Gladiator also took a few ideas that they introduced in Up Your Arsenal like the weapon leveling and multiplayer modes and turned the dial to 11 for Gladiator. Not only can you play through the entire campaign in local co-op, but once challenge mode is started after beating the game, weapons can be leveled up from their max of V10 all the way up to, and get this, V99. Then, thanks to the game being designed in a way that it's basically bingeable and just how fun the combat itself is, you can easily just keep looping from the end of the game right back to the start, playthrough after playthrough, and keep grinding away to level up your gear. Even though Gladiator does remove a lot of core elements that the series is known for and takes a lot of risks in the process, almost all of them pay off to create what is one of the most unique games the series has ever produced. While the environments themselves can feel bland at times and there's a bit too much grey for my liking, the game moves you on to the next thing before you can start to tire of any one place too much. So you take all of this into consideration, it's easy to see why people have different opinions on how you define this game. Is it a mainline game? Is it a spin-off? Well, technically it is Ratchet & Clank 4, since it takes place right after Up Your Ass. But there's a big argument to be made that by removing so many parts of the franchise's identity, including nerfing half of the dynamic duo, that this is more of a spin-off similar to All For One or Full Frontal Assault. I've always thought this fits more into the spin-off category, but at the same time, it's still my favorite Ratchet and Clank game. And I think it sits up there as one of, if not the best, Ratchet and Clank game ever made. Oh, I meant to say at the start as well, but I'm allowed to be biased in this if I want. I have a permit. This just says I can do what I want. So if you love the original trilogy, or any of the Ratchet & Clank games for that matter, there's plenty to love here. But if you never played it, hopefully now you can go in a bit more prepared as to what you're gonna get. There's a reason that this isn't called Ratchet & Clank. So if you're brand new to the series, or you just aren't a huge fan of the combat in general, then this isn't a game that I'd recommend you start with. But if you've never played it, then it's well worth checking out today. And if you have played it, then I'm sure you already know how right I am. Actually, let me know in the comments, would you want to see the series go back to something like this as a one off in the future or would you prefer for it to just stay like how it is now? If you want to play the game yourself, then why don't you check out this video here where I will tell you exactly how to do that along with every other game in the Ratchet & Clank series. I'm not gonna lie,